why does this uh, uh, pandemic come in waves? Why is it wave one, wave two? Was it human intervention that stopped wave one? And was it a letting down of the guard that caused wave two? Or is it just the way that the virus uh, actually, that is the course of the virus, the way it runs? So normally when you have these infections, when for an infection to start spreading in a community, that is stochastic, it's random, the initial part of any pandemic. So a, vac a virus gets introduced into a susceptible population, it needs to infect a critical number of people before it can start spreading. But once that happens, it's like lighting a tinderbox. Pandemic takes off. Then, in a normal influenza pandemic or in another respiratory pandemic, what would happen is it, a large proportion of the population would very rapidly get infected. But unless you have that critical proportion, which is called the herd threshold, getting infected before the pandemic dies down, you will have a next wave. Now, the thing is, we always knew from what we know about the R0 that you need a pretty large number of, of proportion of the population to get infected. You need it's at least 70%, probably 80% of the population being immune. But we are not very clear why the pandemic died or the wave died. But this is something that we know happens, especially with organisms like the SARS-CoV-2 that we're dealing with. Technically, it's called the over-dispersion phenomenon. That is, these are spread through what we call super spreader events. It's not like a uniform spread across a population. There are some people, some situations that spread the virus rapidly, and there are many others who are infected with the virus who won't spread it to more than one other person. For a pandemic or for an infection to happen as an epidemic, each person on an average needs to infect more than one person. That's the logic. If one person can only transmit it to one other person, it becomes an endemic disease. If one person on an average spreads it to less than one person, over time the pandemic will die. Now, as so it is not like the virus is acting on its own. So there are three components to any transmission. First is the virus itself, how catchy it is it? Given that I'm exposed to a virus, what is the chance that I will develop an infection? The second thing is about my how likely am I, given that I'm exposed, am I going to develop the disease, right? And then there is, if I am the one who's giving the infection to somebody else, what is my contact patterns? Am I distancing myself? Am I wearing a mask? All of this. And if I don't come into contact, if I'm a hermit living in one room all through, it's unlikely that even if I'm infected, I'm going to spread, a, spread it to a whole lot of people. But if I'm a hawker on the road, and I'm infected and I meet 40 other people, I'm very likely to spread it to them. And then in the context of the environment, if I'm in open air, it's less likely that the virus will travel from person A to person B. Whereas if you have a closed environment with inadequate ventilation, you would probably have much more likelihood that person A would transmit it to person B. So all of this plays a role in deciding whether transmission persists. And then we had the lockdown that came in. We had non-pharmacological interventions put in place. Those could have had a role to play. Plus, you know, like I said, these are stochastic events. Me transmitting to another person, one super spreader spread, transmitting it to 100 other people, determines whether or not the pandemic propagates. A consequence of this is that the virus will spread rapidly in urban slums, but it will spread less in villages or in settlements where people don't live in close proximity to each other. If you have four rooms in the house and two bedrooms and a person is infected, but does can self-isolate, he's less likely to spread it to his household. So there are many, many things at play. But the consequence of all of this is that once the infection starts, it spreads provided the environment is conducive. It stops transmitting actively, stays under the radar, infecting a few people here and there. 
waiting for the right opportunity, waiting for the right environment. And then when the environment happens, such as when you have large congregations of people, when you have elections, or when you have more people coming in to a particular setting, the pandemic starts again. And once these start, if you have a large enough population which is susceptible, the pandemic starts again. But that still doesn't answer what happened in wave one. And I think a part of that is the first wave affected the slums and the poorer people. At that point in time, we weren't testing enough. So consequently, zero surveys that were done, especially the ones which were done in Mumbai, Pune, and in some of the largest cities, those independent surveys, suggested that about 50% of people in those settings had been infected. True, they did not have the kind of disease that, we are, that is visible today, or maybe even if they did, we wouldn't have known about it. Right? So now we're having a more visible pandemic because if the people who are getting infected are more visible and we are testing more. So in this way, we also have people who are more affluent, have more comorbidities, and if they have the disease, we see them. So a lot remains to be known because a lot of that data is not accessible to us today. But what is good is the zero surveys of the end of 2020 suggested that about 50% had already been infected, at least in the urban tinder boxes. And now with this new way, we should be getting close to herd immunity. But can I predict when that will happen? Will that be in two, three weeks? The answer is it's difficult to predict what will happen. What we do know, however, is if you look at the numbers in Mumbai, they have started consistently falling. Will there be another small wave, another couple of waves? Yes, it's possible. But the hard part is done. There is some more pain left in the urban areas. However, if you look at tier two towns and cities, the pandemic has still not taken off. And if you look at the cumulative numbers, there are still areas which have a potential for a disaster. And that's where vaccines come in. And that's where the longer term strategies will have to be. 